It is Final Fantasy Reconstructed. We're taking a look at some of the character stats uh, between Part 4 and Part 5, which this is the start of Part 5. I did some off-video uh, grinding for some money, a few extra spells, and a few levels just to make sure that the Earth Cave goes smoothly. Um, when you're playing a hack like this, you never quite know what to expect, and uh, there's little that's less fun than... Uh, watching someone die over and over in a dungeon, especially in Final Fantasy 1, a game as slow-paced as it is. Um, coming in here about that dungeon tile, and we've seen a few changes already here, massive changes, I should say. Uh, here's the, the Earth Elemental, the Trap Square. Uh, the cave tile on the outside, if you're looking at this from a narrative perspective uh, and visual language, uh, rather than looking like just a natural cave that's eroded into the mountainside, uh, the horns and the teeth give this a feeling of having been deliberately carved or deliberately created. And as a result, something that, that continues with that theme, uh, so this is a trap square with clearly one or two earths uh, or earth elementals, uh, the cave down here looks a lot more constructed or deliberately put together by some intelligent being or beings. So the earth cave in the vanilla version is just a hole in the mountains, and when you go into it, uh, you have a very natural looking tile set. There isn't anything that I can think of besides um, treasure chests, <laughs> which um, you have to use your imagination a little bit on. There isn't anything that looks like it's been built or constructed, but this one, already here in the first floor of the dungeon, we have bridges, we have uh, waterfalls coming out of what look like gargoyle heads on the tile set. Uh, the earth enemies seem to be uh, roughly the same in terms of stats, but this has, a, as you can see here, it has a much more constructed feel than the Earth Cave in Vanilla. So I'm just pointing out a difference between Vanilla and, and this one, and also just highlighting that um, the consistency of the outside looks like it's constructed and the inside looks like it's constructed. If uh, one or the other of those didn't match up, uh, you'd have a little bit of inconsistency in your visual language. But here, we're consistent all the way through. And uh, we've got the music drop again. And it'll come back here with the battle. Uh, and this is, I'm checking out in the vanilla version, if you head west from the front entrance, you run into the Hall of Giants, which is just a two tile wide um, and roughly, I don't know, maybe 15 or 16 tiles um, up and down hall uh, on which there is a trap square with giants on on every step and i think the it's it's one or two giants um for that tile set i'd have to check uh, to confirm that but it is a battle with giants which in this one is hill gigas uh, and you can see the sprite has been changed to uh something that looks a little bit closer to humanoid has a sword and a shield the giants in the vanilla version are just very large things that look like they're i always thought when i was a kid they look like genies coming out of a bottle because they get very narrow down at their legs and feet. So the sprites are a little less defined than they are here. So you can see I was exploring. Now those two tiles were trapped with giants. This one has two bulls. Um, they go by Minotaur here, but I think this, these would be the bull enemies from the vanilla translation. And I think this was a regularly scheduled battle. I don't think this was a trap square. Obviously, I'm not going to uh, try around to prove it to see. But I was just confirming that the Hall of Giants was there. That's another thing that when you're making a hack of this game, you have to kind of decide what to leave and what not to leave. Um, and that one uh, that one makes it into most things. In fact, uh, in the ZZ version, he hid a nice piece of treasure um, through it. You had to kind of walk through a gauntlet of giants to get a nice piece of treasure. Uh, so the Ogre Chief, uh, I believe these are the Green Ogres, and I am not sure if this is a battle that you can run into on the first floor of the Earth Cave in Vanilla. Uh, it could be. Uh, I know Green Ogres are down here. Uh, the battle with four of them, I'm not sure if that's one you can do. Uh, so here again, and, and it, just like in the Vanilla version, lots of chests are trapped, uh, protected by the Earth Elementals. 
and so you'll you have to be ready to uh, to fight them. And in the vanilla version, they are unrunnable. The uh, the one Earth or two to four Earths um, are un unrunnable. So you need to be careful on that. Um, looking up the stats of the Earth enemies. They're uh, rather high in the enemy table. But, uh, yeah, so they have uh, 288 hit points. Um, and they hit you uh, with uh, 66 base attack. Pretty pretty big. Uh, also, they, uh, they do have the magical... Um, creature type, which is interesting. So the uh, the, the rune sword uh, could work on them in the vanilla version. And they're just physical bruisers. So I have to watch for that. 288 hit points. I'll have to see if that's been changed. So here we go again with the bomb-cobra combination. I talked about that a little bit in uh, part 4, where we just did our collectathon from the Mystic Key. The bomb uh, probably, and this is just a guess again, here's the Earth Elementals again, probably replaced another monster in the enemy table unless the author of this hack was able to uh, find space for extra enemies, which, uh, I, as I understand, would be pretty tricky. Maybe not impossible, maybe actually impossible, since I know a lot about this game, but not a lot about hacking it or changing it. But the bombs, of course, bring this game uh, much more into alignment with the future of Final Fantasy games. And I guess one thing that I'm curious about, and I'm just kind of thinking uh, thinking ahead, I'm curious to see if we're going to run into someone named Sid. Uh, that, I'm sure that was a choice that was considered by the author of this patch, uh, whether or not to include a character named Sid. And... So it, it, you're looking at that, and I fought a, a you know pretty pretty strong trapped battle in front of a chest, but it only has one uh, cure potion or one heal potion in front of it. If you think that that's a troll move by the author of this patch, uh, it's likely you have not played a lot of the vanilla version of this game because this game has some brutal trapped chests with very little uh, in them, with measly treasure in them. So that is definitely not a uh, not a troll move, but I'd say that lines up pretty consistently with this game. Because remember, there's only so many weapons in this game. I think the, there's only 64 pieces of, uh, of weapons and 64 pieces of armor um, that are in this game. So you can't really, if you're making chests in dungeons, you can't have all of them contain better and better weapons in every dungeon. You have to have a lot of chests that just contain kind of an insignificant amount of gold or a uh, very cheap consumable item like those potions. Uh, so this floor, the, the second floor of the dungeon, is, uh, is also similarly laid out to the first floor. Obviously, we don't have bridges in... Uh, in, in that one. So here's the gargoyle, the same kind of enemies that I fought as a trapped square back in the Temple of Fiends, but because it was a uh, strike first, you know it's runnable. It is a runnable battle that you can get away from. And using that knowledge here in the second one, I know I can get away from these guys. So that means I, I may have been able to run from the battle that was triggered uh, in the Temple of Fiends by the sprites. I am not sure on that. I didn't try to. I just took the gargoyles on because um, I knew from vanilla that I probably could have handled them. They, their thing is they give you lots of hits. They can uh, hit you multiple times. But if you have a decent armor, it'll they'll attack you for six hits for six damage. Here I'm just confirming that this floor does just have two paths that you can take to the same place, which I, which makes it similar to uh, the vanilla version. Here these cobras are actually running away. That's because they are failing their morale check at the beginning of their action, of every monster's action, including bosses, by the way, they make a morale check to see if they should run away. And that morale check is based on um, a morale score that every enemy has, and it's a, and there's a random element in there, and it's a function of your level. So if your level is high enough and they roll low enough on their, um, on their morale check versus their morale number, uh, they will choose to run away, and that's one of the famous... Uh, bugs here. I'm just comparing stats for the, uh, between the uh, Iron Shield and the Buckler. Let's see, 31, 49. Uh, I'm thinking about it, trying to see if there's anything else that could be uh, 
different about this shield because the stats appear to be the same. And I'm actually getting a little bit of uh, of the um, of the dungeon music there in the menu, which is uh, that's something I think I'm noticing for the first time. Is that the dungeon music continues as you get into your menu. It does still uh, reset. Yeah. So here in the menu, we're getting to listen to the dungeon music, not the menu music. That's a really nice touch that I'm just noticing now. But there's an example of you can hear the, the, the middle voice um, dropping out. And this is something that happens in the vanilla, vanilla version. The middle voice drops out when sound effects are playing. So that kind of that highlights kind of what happens when you open text boxes here. But the middle voice drops out to make way for the sound effects. But again, that's something that happens in many, many NES games uh, that use all of the sound channels of the NES like this. So anything with music worth listening to, basically, has uh, music that cuts out uh, the middle voice. Uh, this is the third floor, and this is the vampire's floor. This is one of the more dangerous floors on it. It's, this one can have even worse encounters than the last couple of floors in the Earth Cave in the vanilla version. And this one has a few treasure chests that kind of force you off your route a little bit. Now, it was pretty clear the visual language of the way this floor was laid out um, suggested very strongly that there would be a trapped battle right there with the two teeth uh, right in front of the chest, around the tile in front of the chest. Uh, there's a not insignificant amount of gold. A couple thousand gold. And here we have the wizards again. Now, in the vanilla version, the wizards are an unrunnable battle. Uh, I think they made that choice because they do appear at one time as a quote-unquote boss in front of the crown at the bottom of the marsh cave. But that means that every time you run into that enemy, they are unrunnable, whether they are uh, way too hard or way too easy uh, for you. Uh, and they have, I think, about 70 hit points in the vanilla version, and uh, here they seem to have about the same. And the two hits... Um, let me look up the stats on the wizards. I'm going to see if they get two hits. I believe they do. And I'm healing up here. And there we have the um, the music dropping out again there. Oh, they have 84 hit points. The wizard do the wizards in the vanilla version. And they do have two hits. They do have two hits. Uh, and they go as uh, type magical and type aquatic. So again, the weir sword um, should land on them. Of course, this uses the later version uh, Pisco Demon to label the, the wizards, which is kind of the... Uh, accepted standard of what they probably should have been called in the vanilla version, but I think they were a little bit worried about the, the Gygax company coming after them. TSR, the publishers of the D&D game, coming after them for a proprietary monster name. Because pretty clearly, the way their sprites designed, they are supposed to be Pisco Demons. So most later games have gone ahead and, uh, and given that, made that adjustment. But they do pop up here in this floor, and they can be very dangerous for your characters. So this floor, um, with the vampire, is kind of a big spiral. So you come in at the bottom, and you have to head um, right and up, and work your way around in a circle back to the center. So you kind of go right and up counterclockwise in a big counterclockwise circle. Um, and you can take a couple of branching paths to collect a little bit of treasure, and that's what has been done here with this hack. So I, I have an option to take that branching path, but mostly I need to work my way around to the um, around counterclockwise. And in the vanilla version, I will skip a lot of those treasures because I know what's in those chests, and I know there's nothing really of note in there, so it's, it's not worth it to uh, take the risk of running into those nasty battles that will drain your resources. So it's better uh, in that one, if you're not trying to 100% the game to just get right to the vampire. And the extra levels that I picked up off of the video uh, are helping make this uh, pretty a pretty smooth crawl of the Earth Cave, which is, again, was my goal with this. This is a higher level than I would do this if I was playing it casually, but I wanted to make sure we could get a nice clean run 
of the Earth Cave so that I could show it off. And now this is a change right there. The Pisco Demon hit my, I think it was Grand, hit Grand with slow two. So the Pisco Demons actually have an AI routine in this in this hack. They they do not have an AI routine in the vanilla version. All they do is attack. All they do is just physical physical bruisers is all they are. But in this one they've been given at least one spell. I haven't seen an ability from them, but I have seen a spell. So it's possible that they have a, a small chance, maybe uh maybe like sixty four out of one twenty eight on the spell and no ability. Um so that they that maybe 20% of the time, maybe they will cast that spell. I'm only just going by my observation here. But just because I've seen them do so many physical attacks and had not seen them uh, throw a spell at me until just that moment. Uh, I'm just conjecturing that they don't have an ability. So the game checks to see if an enemy has an ability. And then it rolls a random number to see if the enemy uses that ability. And if it doesn't use an ability, it checks to see if it has a spell. And then it does a random check to see if it casts a spell. And only then uh, will it go to attack. So it makes a morale check, checks for abilities, checks for spells. Failing all that, it just goes for a physical attack. So that's how the game uh, looks at enemy... Uh, that's how the game chooses enemy actions. So it's it's weighed uh, pretty significantly towards abilities. So if a, a monster has both abilities and spells you're likely to see abilities more than spells and they appear in a pretty in a fixed progression so if their spells are like the wizards uh, if their spell list is slow to ice to um, fire to and rub or death the wizards when they use a spell they will always use that first one on the on the first time they use a spell and then They'll keep taking turns until they roll spell again, then they'll use that second one. So there's slow two again, so we can see evidence supporting that um, that system hasn't changed. And I haven't really seen any Final Fantasy 1 hack where the system has changed. I've seen numbers change, I've seen sprites change, I've seen some you know values in addresses change, but in terms of how the game works and how the math works, I haven't really seen any changes in that. That would be a much more involved hack, I would think. So here I am thinking that that's the vampire waiting for us. Um, so I'm going to be cautious in coming up to him. There's not a trap square in front of him. That seems more of a hard type hack kind of thing to put a trap square in front of the vampire. Uh, this text looks very similar to the vanilla version. So it's it's been changed very little, if at all, from the vanilla translation. Uh, the vampire is susceptible to harm three. And you can see I have three charges of those level five spells now. So um, the, the off-screen grinding significantly helped me with that. And again, I stand by my off-screen grinding. Um, it's something that's been pointed out to me before. There's the ruby. So the vampire protects the ruby in the vanilla version. So, uh, so far, the key items haven't been changed much. That, I'm guessing, is the slab. Yes, there's a stone plate on the floor. You sent something evil? Uh, you can say that with an Austin Powers voice if you care to. So the slab uh, has been changed to a statue, which is a nice little touch. Uh, rather than just a flat uh, plate, it's been changed to a statue. And we now need to deliver the ruby to the Titan to go talk to Sarda the Sage to get uh, the rod, which will shatter that statue. But now I'm going up to inspect this uh, this. Uh, door and if this game indeed has uh, modern RPG sensibilities in mind of player friendliness it will be an exit to the world map and as you can see indeed it is an exit to the world map so in the vanilla version for those of you who don't know at this part of the game you have to fight the vampire beat the vampire then you have to crawl your way back out of the earth cave the way you came across that same floor with the nasty wizard battles uh, and then back through the second and first floors now you have you will have already collected the treasures from the first floor so you won't have to do you can just go directly back to the first floor so it's not too long it's really that third floor with the vampire that you run into the really nasty stuff but what the author of this patch has chosen to do um, 
which lines it up with more modern RPG balance and, and sensibilities. The author has given you an exit after that part. And I feel that that is a positive change to this game because the making you backtrack was a way a lot of people have, have said, and I agree with this, with this thought, that it was a way to kind of artificially extend the game or um, artificially raise your challenge level. So to, to make what is a 10 hour game, a 10 and a half hour game, they made you go back through that earth cave. Here's the Titan's Tunnel, um, much different color palette. We see that purple, and this purple color is not one that you see very much. Uh, the Tigers, this is similar to uh, some of the cat-like enemies that pop up in, in the Titan's Tunnel of the vanilla version. The sprite has been updated, but there is, uh, there is a tiger-cat-like thing. And there's the Titan there. I don't think he's on a bridge in the vanilla version. I think the bridge tiles um, have been added. And... Uh, he does crunch, crunch, crunch. He eats your ruby. And then, indeed, there are some treasure chests um, in in the Titan's Tunnel. I don't know if those if those chest doors are actually locked by the Mystic Key or not. It's interesting because you obviously can't access this area without the Mystic Key. But you do still have it in your possession, so I would be curious to see if you could um, if you could warp yourself to this part of the world without the Mystic Key if the uh, if those doors would be locked. That's a, just an interesting thought that just popped into my head. Obviously, it's totally irrelevant because there are, uh, in this game, sequence breaking is not really what it uh, what it is in later uh, Final Fantasy games because there aren't many world warps or anything. You're not there aren't story sequences that bring you from one town to another. You can't mess around with things like the Time Mage's exit spell <laughs> to uh, to have the game warp you to places you're not supposed to be yet, or the the classic. Um, FF6, game over without saving after getting the airship that starts you back at the beginning of the game um, at Narsh with the airship. That's kind of a fun thing. So you can, as soon as you leave uh, the town of Narsh, you can get in that airship and start flying around the very first chapter of the game. But there just aren't a lot of things like that because of, this game doesn't really have much for story sequences. You just fight your way from dungeon to dungeon. So the these caves don't have... Okay, I'm just listening for the music to see. I believe that uh, in the vanilla version, Sardis Cave does use the same Matoya's Cave music. Um, now we have... So we have two characters in here. They're both Moogles. And, uh, yeah, so he gives us the rod. And the rod is... It's capital R, but it's not all caps. Uh, key items are all capped in, um, in the vanilla version. Uh, there aren't any treasure chests, I believe, in the vanilla version of Sardis Cave. So that's uh, not a change. So just the tile sets have been changed. But, but yeah, the Titan's Tunnel is a much darker blue in the uh, in the vanilla version. So it's it's been made brighter, and you see more of the of that purple color. So here's more of those shadows. Uh, we talked about having the very high surprise rate. In this part of the world map, you will fight these groups of uh, four to six shadows, I think, about four-ish shadows, and they will often give you a su surprise round. They will hit you with a surprise round. Um, luckily, they don't hit very hard, so it's really just more of an irritation thing. It's just more of a time thing. They don't really crush you for too much. And at this point, if you have a, a decently balanced party, these groups of undead that can stun you are a little bit less threatening because you have, in my case, I have two characters who can deal area of effect, uh, massive lethal damage to undead. So in these parts of the game, when I, ha when I have the black mage can cast uh, all targeting fire spells, and the white mage even can get a free casting of harm one thanks to that cleric hammer. Which, uh, again, I'm not sure what weapon that replaced. Uh, in the vanilla version, there is a weapon called the Light Axe, L-I-G-H-T, Axe, and that casts Harm 2, I believe, when used as an item. And I think there's a couple of Light Axes in the game. So I'm replenishing my magic charges because I used a couple of those. I do want to save my Harm 3 and Fire 3 spells for Lich, assuming, again, that Lich is at the bottom of that cave. Although I'm going to make that assumption because so far most of the things, the changes I've seen to this have, have been... Um, aesthetic changes and uh, a few tweaks so I'm not expecting that for example Kraken will be waiting for me at the bottom of the earth cave in this patch 
But that's me metagaming a little bit, based on my knowledge of both the vanilla version and other hacks of this game, and just using observations I've made so far on this hack. So again we go into the Earth Cave, and yes, I do have to go back through the regular entrances. Now, the, the vanilla version does... The, there is precedent in the vanilla version for having multiple exits to a dungeon that both bring you back to the world map, and what I'm thinking of is the Ice Cave has the the main entrance. It always brings you when you go into the cave to the main entrance of the Ice Cave, but the Ice Cave does have an alternate exit. So the game does give you a little bit of mercy in what is the um, the deadliest dungeon of the game. The game does throw you a bone there and let you kind of work your way through it. You can pick up the floater. You still, you can't leave right after you get the floater. You still have to go through another trapped battle with undead and another floor, um, but you can get to an alternate exit. So there is precedent in the vanilla version for multiple exits. Um, the game just doesn't give them to you as often. So I think that's probably what hackers have taken advantage of, is that the game does have that capability built into it already. Uh, so here I'm on the vampire's floor again, and this is where I can run into these wizards. But again, because of part, partly because of my off-video off grinding, I can handle them without too much trouble. I have enough spell charges. I have enough hit points. that I can handle them uh, pretty easily. You can see my, uh, both my fighters are up to up to three and four hits now, so we are delivering a lot more damage. My black belt is hitting with a lot more crits. So that's how he really does his major damage is by getting four and then later on eight, and then later on 16 hits, and many of them have the, uh, the chance to go critical, and they have a pretty high crit rate. So you can start really piling on the damage with critical hits. Now, as you can see, my high absorb there is really helping me. Two hits, two damage. That means that they rolled lower in their damage range and weren't actually able to overcome my absorb. So it does get reduced to one. Unlike some of the later Final Fantasy games, you can't have a hit for zero damage in this game. Every hit that lands does at least one which is what makes some of the crazy things that uh, people do with this game, like unarmed, uh, going through the game completely unarmed without black belts, so just having fighters uh, and, and mages attacking with their, with their fists without the benefit of uh, the barehanded ability. Here's an enemy that I don't believe I've seen before in this run. I don't know what, uh, what enemy this would be analogous to in the vanilla version, and because I'm, I'm a little unsure about what to expect with Lich, here I, I inspect the, the, the statue, the plate, and we have the Earth Staff. Um, so it's not just called Rod, it's called the Earth, uh, the Earth Staff, the Rod to pry open the, yeah, the, the plate in the Earth Cave. So on we go into the fourth floor. Now, the Earth Cave in the, in the vanilla version, the, the fourth and fifth floors, have uh, they do have some difficult encounters. Um, you can run into more of the bull-type enemies down here. Again, the Will-O-Wisps the, the will here, I'm not sure what they are. Uh, I probably should have fought at least one battle with a Will-O-Wisp, but I, I wanted to be conservative about uh, my resources for Lich to make sure that I would have enough. So here I'm just I'm inspecting the... the the floor area, because it looks like that might go on, um, but I'm going back to see if I missed any chests here in the earlier part. Uh, this battle I decided to just uh, cheese it, because again I want to save those charges. So I did find a couple chests up here, and these are possibly trapped squares. Um, hard to tell without uh, taking another step and seeing if the next one is trapped, and when you see the next one has a battle, you can deduct that this one uh, might be a trap square also. So here we have the um, the Ogre Mage, the Green Ogre, and uh, this this Bighorn thing. And uh, again, I'm not sure what uh, this took the place of, because the, uh, the, the bulls, I think, are the Minotaur uh, enemies here, because that just makes sense. Bulls look like Minotaur uh, sprites in the first one. Bulls and Zombulls. Zombul, one of my favorite... Uh, enemy names from the vanilla version. So here we have two characters stunned by those undead. Uh, sphinxes are in uh, are in the, the vanilla version. Uh, there's sphinxes and there's chimeras. 
Uh, so I'm, I'm wondering if the Sphinx, what's called the Sphinx in here, might be the Chimera uh, enemies from the vanilla version. I could be wrong about that. Again, I'm going just by my memory. Uh, but luckily, these traps battles are runnable, uh, so they're not just with the uh, the earth elementals, which are unrunnable. So you have to you have to fight those and take all of their massive uh, physical damage with the earth elementals. So nothing uh, of note there. I did pick up the coral sword earlier in the earth cave, and that's the weapon that I'm using that has the best uh, the best stats on it now. And I think that has an enemy type uh, affiliation, but I. I I'm not sure. I think it's aquatic type enemies that it works on. But because the damage curve is so wonky in this game, the, the damage ratios are so crazy. Here's two trolls. Now, trolls are in the vanilla version, but their sprite looks different. I'm assuming that these trolls are uh, just replace the trolls from the vanilla version. Here's a bat in my way. I'll let that go. And we have an invisible bridge. We have a broken bridge with an invisible platform over it. Now, uh, from a, a visual narrative point of view, that's interesting. Um, I didn't, I'm not quite sure what it suggests. Um, it's up. I guess it's up to the, the viewer to make his or her own guess as to what that suggests. I mean, obviously it means that uh, you can have a walkable surface without having a texture tile on top of it, which is sh it kind of goes without saying. Here's just more of these uh, easily runnable trapped battles. But I don't know if that's something that was put there by Lich, because remember we were talking about how much this dungeon looks like it was built, it was constructed, it was deliberately created. Um, and I suppose you wouldn't have a magical walkway in something that was just a natural hole in the ground that a Lich was just living in. You have uh, up there, and we'll see it as soon as the, the bats out of my way will go up that way. Uh, we have the Still Waterfall, which is interesting here. Obviously, this game was made before you could have moving background tiles. So you found some water tiles and the gargoyle head, and so we just have the, the waterfall. You have to use your imagination. Now, Right there to the right, um, this is a comment on how this, this is, is put together. That um, strongly suggests that there is a hole there, or an entrance there. It looks different than the other holes, but to the eye of a player, that strongly suggests that there is, a, there is an entrance there. When you take a look at that, that's, it's, it looks like there's an entrance there, but once I come up to it, um, it's clear now that that's just a, a gap in the floor with the um, the wall tile above it creating a boxed-in hole that looks like it's an entrance. So that's um, something that caught me. I don't know if that was intentional or not, but it's something that caught this player uh, because that caught my eye immediately as something to check out. And here I get uh, I get stuck with some bats. And now there's two bats in my in my stairwell. And there, there's really not much I can do here besides wait. Um, the, the bats will just uh, keep going in their random direction, but you can't push a bat out of the uh, those one-tile-wide holes. You have to just let them come out on their own, and the other bat is causing me some problems. What I should have been doing probably is pushing the other bat out of the way. I should have been getting the other bat out of there. I didn't want to trigger too many battles, though, and walk over too many squares, so I should have been getting the other bat out of the way. Here's the fifth floor. And, um, and the, the fifth floor is, is set up. Again, the, the dungeon layout is similar to uh, the one in, in vanilla. I believe it's been compacted maybe just a little bit. But again, space you get lost a little bit in the spaces down here because your, your view is so small in this game. What you can see of a dungeon floor is so small, and it's interrupted by battles so often in, in the vanilla version. And, and in this in this one, any version of FF1, you're going to get interrupted by a lot of, of slow-paced battles. So it's kind of hard for your brain to put together a clear map of what a dungeon floor looks like because you can see so little of it at a time, and you just get little flashes of it between battles. Here we have some damage tiles, or at least it is pretty clear visual language-wise that those are going to be damage tiles. And uh, you can see my the the damage sound effect knocked out 
the the dungeon music until we had a screen transition into the menu. So uh, music and sound effects aren't getting along very well down here in the Earth Cave. So here I'm approaching the crystal, and the crystal has a much more uh, later Final Fantasy look. It has the it actually has facets. Okay, and so triggering the text box uh, brought the music back. Lich here is red rather than purple. Uh, other than that, it looks like the, the shape of the sprite has been mostly unchanged, but the color has been made... Uh, his, his robes are of red rather than of purple. Uh, it still has the, the feature of uh, you don't select a target for your fight. Um, here's here's X Ice. I wanted to land that before Lich casts his Ice 2 spell. That is indeed if... He still casts Ice 2 in this hack, and you can see he does. So my X Ice, or my A Ice, fired just in time before he came up with his leading Ice 2. Because Lich has a very, very um, high chance to cast Ice 2. Oh, I had that, I had it incorrectly between skills and magic. That is, uh, I misspoke earlier. Let me correct that now. It checks for magic before it checks for skills. So magic will be uh, weighed more heavily than skills. I spoke incorrectly before. Uh, and you can see Lich doesn't seem to have been buffed very much. Uh, 400 hit points in the vanilla version and not much more than that in this one. So we missed the, uh, because of the emulators and the frame rate, we missed the uh, the animation of the, of the spirit going up there. But I spoke incorrectly. Magic is first, skill is second, and Lich has a 96 out of 128. I think that is three-fourths chance to cast Ice 2 on its first action. So let me apologize for misspeaking on the algorithms there. But that's the Earth Cave. The uh, Earth Crystal should be illuminated, and we are ready to go on to Crescent Lake. We'll see you next time.